Hello everyone, hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to the Film and Say channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some more restaurants featured on Kitchen Nightmares and reveal how they're doing now. So, without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Leon's Family-run business Leon's was opened in 1996 by a woman named Rose and for a while business was good. Falling into a coma following some complications from an operation for over three years, her son Michael was forced into taking over the restaurant. When she finally returned, Leon's was on the verge of closing down since it had lost a significant amount of money. While it used to be constantly booked, because of Michael's leadership, they barely got any customers. In desperate need of change, Rose calls out to the legendary chef Gordon Ramsay for some help. Meeting first with Rose, she admits that practically everything about the restaurant is wrong and she needs his guidance to get back on track. Introduced to the staff, he meets Trudy who explains that there really isn't anyone leading the restaurant. Rose's son, Michael, mentions that he only works part-time at the restaurant and that most of the time he sits down during his shift. Wanting to taste the food, he orders one of everything from the menu, which is over 100 dishes. Once everything is finally complete, he can't tell some of the dishes apart since they look anything but presentable. Each dish tastes bland or has way too much garlic and the fish dishes especially tasted the worst. Going into the kitchen, he notices that the chefs are clearly undertrained since their workspace was filthy. Investigating the walk-in freezer, he notices that there is rotten food, cross-contamination, and meat and seafood that is improperly stored. Later on, Chef Ramsay gives Michael some one-on-one -on -one training, so at least he can improve his basic cooking skills. Over the course of the night, Ramsay completely changes the restaurant, modernizing the dining room and installing a new POS system for making orders. Cutting the menu in half, the Kitchen Nightmares host added freshly cooked and modern Italian dishes. Today, the business is still very much open with a good 3.5 stars on Yelp across 311 unique reviews. Two of the chefs that appeared in the show were fired immediately after, though Michael was revealed to still work there in a revisiting episode. He admits to still only working part-time at the restaurant and spends the rest of his time in a local bar, which angers Ramsay. The host gets him to promise to be a better leader and commit to the restaurant. Sadly, Rosemary Leone passed away in April of 2014, but her precious restaurant still lives on. Rest in peace. Michonne's Alan Gay Wilson, alongside their daughter Natalie Michonne Wilson, owned the restaurant Michonne's, located in Georgia, Atlanta. Naming it after their daughter, they were hoping that they could one day pass the restaurant over to her. Supposedly, the staff believes when it was run by Al, things ran smoothly and people loved his smoked meats. However, after suffering from a collapsed lung, Al became unable to work and inevitably passed the control over to Natalie. Being a hands-off manager, Natalie let the standards slip down to abysmal levels and the restaurant quickly began to lose money. With no other options, Al decides to reach out to Chef Ramsay so he could bring Michonne's back to its glory days. Upon his arrival, Ramsay is actually impressed with the stunning decor of the restaurant, which is extremely rare. Meeting up with Natalie, he finds out that she spends most of her time in the back office doing close to nothing. Also paying the staff a visit, a server named Tadisha tells Ramsay that the only redeeming thing about her boss is that she makes sure that everyone was paid their wages on time. To give the food a try, he tries to order some potato salad, but it's unavailable since the chefs can't be bothered to make it. Seriously? Finally deciding on some items, he gets some chicken wings which are old and tough, the salad he got had a rotten tomato in it, and generally everything was just nasty. Later going into the kitchen to confront the cooks, he finds out that there isn't a head chef and that everything but the salad was microwaved. Poking around, he finds some plastic tubs filled with hundreds of chicken wings that were cooked days ago. Not impressed, Ramsay relays this information to Natalie and tries to get her to step up for once and take the lead of her restaurant. Agreeing to do so, the famous chef makes some valuable changes to the restaurant by first appointing a head chef and then improving the menu. Sadly, however, it seems like not much has changed since Ramsay left since the reviews on Yelp were nothing but poor with people complaining about their horrible service, long waits, and nasty food. It completely closed down in early 2018 and most likely will never come back. So much for passing on the business to Natalie. Park's Edge Having no experience whatsoever, owners Richard and George decided to get into the restaurant business. Though since the food is overcomplicated and the staff has too much work to handle, things have only been tough. What's worse, in the few years that the place has been open, the health department has forced them to shut down twice for the slew of violations they've made. Richard and George send out a call to Gordon Ramsay for some aid. Arriving and sitting down with the owners, they admit that they've made mistakes with the locals but claim their food is excellent. Yeah, right. The wanting to put this claim to the test, he orders some grilled salad, some oysters, and sesame salmon. Predictably, he's unimpressed with the food, describing it to be inedible, poorly presented, and dry. Eventually, Ramsay comes to learn that George went straight into opening the restaurant after finishing culinary school, which makes him say that he shouldn't be running a kitchen. It doesn't help that the staff were inexperienced as well, especially under George's horrible leadership skills. Watching the dinner service, the customers seem unhappy with the food and most of the dishes are sent back to the kitchen. This makes Richard retreat outside and smoke in order to avoid complaints since he has no idea how to deal with them. 
Additionally, some customers had to wait so long for food that they got fed up and just walked out. Inspecting the kitchen, Ramsay finds some rotting ingredients and George claims that it's the staff's fault somehow. Despite this disaster, the owners eventually step up and the famous chef changes the menu and decorates the restaurant with local art. Following the show's intervention, Park's Edge kept most of the changes made but did return some customer favorites to the menu. The reviews on Yelp were very mixed with some people complaining about the service and how the food can sometimes be a hit or miss. Nine months after failing a health inspection, the restaurant failed yet another in October of 2011, which worsened its reputation. In early 2014, Park's Edge closed down after their lease ran out in November of 2013. However, they were supposed to reopen in another location which never seemed to happen and maybe it's for the best. Something odd was that their website stayed active until 2020, being up for 6 years after it officially closed down. Charlie's Italian Bistro For this episode of the show, Gordon Ramsay pays a visit to Charlie's Italian Bistro in Laverne, California. Tatiana Lave, the owner, began working at the restaurant as a waitress and eventually was offered the chance to buy it herself in 2008. Not exactly having the funds to do so, she turned to her family in hopes that they could help raise some money. Both her mother Patty and her sister Val helped out by purchasing the restaurant by putting their houses on the line. Comically, the person who was going to own the restaurant in the first place, Tatiana, only pledged a thousand dollars. What a joke. Once finally owning Charlie's, Tatiana did nothing to change the restaurant, keeping the same 14 year old name and menu. A lot of the staff feel that Tatiana doesn't know how to manage the restaurant and isn't open to any change as well as is extremely disrespectful. Clearly, her mother and sister are very concerned about the success of the restaurant since their homes are at risk, so they ask for Gordon Ramsay's help. Expecting to meet an owner named Charlie, Ramsay notices that the only person there is Tatiana. Getting it 18 months ago, Tatiana bought it from the previous owner named Simon who got it from Charlie. Ready to jump into trying some food, Chef Ramsay is completely disappointed with the disgusting meals he served. Wanting to understand why it was so bad, he inspects the kitchen and finds that most of their ingredients are frozen. To see the chef's skill levels, he challenges them to make the meatballs from scratch and one of the two succeed. Forcing Tatiana to step up, she fires the one who wasn't able to make some meatballs, which was hard since she'd been working with him for 10 years. Now that the restaurant was missing a chef, Ramsay introduces his own chef named Jonathan who will help him find a new one. Ramsay feels that Tatiana should be more involved in the kitchen and teaches her how to make a pizza and lasagna. After seeing the owner's drive to change, Ramsay does his magic. He revamps the menu and improves the decor. Once the Kitchen Nightmare staff left, Jonathan continued to work with the restaurant for a month and helped them find a new chef. However, in the end, Charlie's Italian Bistro closed down in July of 2012 for reasons that are completely unclear. Well, that will be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one guys!